Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of the BJJ Foxcast. I'm your host, Alex Martinez. And today, I am very excited to have Professor Thomas Rodzinski on the podcast. Uh, Thomas is a third degree black belt uh, under Adam Razovic, right? Did I get it right? Yeah, cool. He is also a judo black belt um, and owner of Roll Academy. Um, Thomas, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me here. Glad yeah. to have this conversation. Awesome, awesome. Hey, listen, I want to get right to it. Um, you know, we'll get to the jujitsu stuff, but I'd always like to find out how people came about in their, you know, in their uh, life before jujitsu. So let's talk about that. Um, let's not. I don't want to go right into how we found it. I want to talk about your life before that. You're an engineer by trade, correct? That's correct. That's correct. I spent many years, uh, you know, starting right from my late teens or 20 early 20s you yeah. know getting into it and and climbing that corporate ladder of of you know help desk and troubleshooting laptops and computers to getting into more engineering stuff and then get into you know network design and other things and and you know at the end of my corporate career you know i was in a function of supporting larger teams and actually building teams for the technology groups you know, within the companies that, that that I work for. So there's a lot of engineering in my mind. And I often like to think about it, you know, that that's how I process information all the way general, not, not necessarily even life, but not even jujitsu, just in general, that's how I operate. So yeah, yeah. So is it would you consider yourself more of a, um, a technician than an artist then? You know, that's a very, like a very fine line. Yeah. Because I think a technician in a way it is an artist yeah. like there is a level of interpretation that has to take place in order for one to solve problems mm -hmm. I, I would you know if if i was to introduce a third column a third category i'm a troubleshooter by nature oh, i'm a yeah. fixer i'm a fixer i want to solve problems yeah. you have a problem you tell me i solve the problems that's how i like to look at it you know and in life, you know, my family often is annoyed with me because I want to fix everything. I don't want to sometimes <laughs> listen to people, but I want to fix things. And, yeah. you know, but it's just the way how over time, especially in my corporate life, uh, you know, pre jujitsu or pre what I do now, that that's how I operated. And, and, you know, as we evolve, as we get older, these embedded habits, these ways of life, they convert into other things and we just yeah. continue on you know, with our path, yeah. you know, and we adopt other things and, and we use the skills that we have, you know, yeah. and, and so what happens, I, I find that part troubleshooting, solving problems as, as one of the skill sets that, that, you know, I, I embrace. I love it. I love it. And, you know, so when, when you're dealing, when you're living in this corporate world, cause I lived in it for 20 plus years mm -hmm. and you always have this entrepreneurial spirit that you're almost, at least I was kind of stamping down. Like, you know, I was so busy chasing a dollar in my corporate life that I kind of neglected what my real calling was. Were you ever pulled in like, like that when you're, when you're working as an engineer, working as a troubleshooter and, and, and in the back of your mind, you're like, gosh, there's just some, something else that I want to be doing. Was that pulling, pulling at you? You know, it, I think corporate life is very appealing to many um, because it presents opportunities, mm. you know, often, especially if you work for a good company, they allow you to build the skills. They give you the tools that you need to grow. Um, you, you know, in corporate life, often we have the opportunities to grow as individuals, as as a person, and then as a, a, a as a as a skill that obviously will bring bring benefits to the company yeah. and to yourself. Right. So it's very appealing to many people. I think the the trade off that you have to give up is the freedom of doing what you want. Because, yeah. you know, simply with a larger corporation, especially, you know, I, I don't like to think of it as you are a number, but in a way you need to fit in a cookie cutter, you know, scenarios. You yeah. need to follow what the visions are. You have to, you know, do what is necessary for the smaller, for the larger, for the bigger, for the, for the huge teams to, yeah. you know, essentially win. Right. Yeah. So, even though I think it sets us for success, it limits us often. Yeah, with creativity, and that that like the the million dollar question often comes up is, well, do you want to be really creative and free, or do you want to kind of rely on this recipe that's given mm, to you yeah, in order for you yeah. to succeed? 
right? And, 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 and like, you know, don't think of it as a right or wrong. These are just different ways of approaching life. Yeah. And I know personally some individuals who had great opportunities of being an entrepreneur working for themselves and they hate it. They just don't like it. They want to be very driven and, and be in that environment of corporate life. And that's great. Mm. You know, in my life, you know, it, it, there was a point and, 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 you know, I probably could pinpoint, like narrow this down, but like there was a point in which I was getting bored with the cookie cutter yeah, and my creativity, you know, start getting born, if you will, or being more exposed. And, you know, and this is where you start scratching your head, you know, is this the grass greener on the other side of a fence? And, mm. you know, and so it happened that jujitsu was a big part of my life, you know, and the idea was born to perhaps to do this for a living, you know, yeah. and, you know, as crazy as that sounds, you know, we, we, we've prepared a plan, we have executed the plan and, you know, here we are, you know, nearly yeah. a decade later. And, and I would never, actually, I was speaking with somebody from the corporate life recently and they were like, well, how is life? How is everything? How is the freedom? And I was like, hey, listen, it, it's still work, you know, yeah. I was like, would you ever go back? And I was like, hell no, hell no. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. That's... You know? So um, there is something satisfying for me personally. Yeah. Work I th- for yourself and, you know, being the driver behind behind everything that you do. Yeah. I always admired um, some. There were people that I admired when I when I worked in the corporate world that really loved what they did. They wanted to work for a corporation that allowed them, I guess, the freedom, so to speak, to build a team. And yep. to kind of, you know, build it in their vision. Now they were given, they were given some, you know, short-term and long-term goals that they had to meet. Right. And they were excited about the, the opportunity to find those people that can help them achieve that goal, build that yeah. team. I think that's really awesome. Um, I unfortunately never got into that position. I was always in sales and it was very individual. And, you know, the more I read about people who are truly, truly successful in life, and I'm not talking about just monetarily, I'm talking about in their personal lives, with their spiritual lives, with whatever life they live, um, there's, there's a, they, they're, they're all playing uh, the same game. They're playing the long game. And mm-hmm. unfortunately in sales, in the corporate world, you're not allowed that long game. If you're coming into a corporate world, say you have a college education, you've got, you know, $100,000 in in school debt, and you're going to rely on this job to help you pay for it. Well, when you go into sales, it's not about your school debt, and it's about not about you. It's about meeting that number at the end of that first year. And yeah. if you're truly playing a long game, that doesn't match up. That doesn't match up to, ha- in my opinion, it doesn't, it doesn't match up to happiness, right? You know, it doesn't match up to longevity, obviously. But um, what do you what do you think about that? What do you think about the stepping back and seeing yourself playing a longer game? Well, I, I think, you know, at least the way how I look at life, you know, it's all about, you know, that long term. Mm. So it's not about in my mind, it's mm. not about who wins today, mm. but it's about who survives at the end. Who's who's the last man standing, essentially, yeah. in some way. And like if you listen to um guys like um uh uh now i'm slipping but uh you know they're they're uh, uh i got so many books out there <laughs> um uh simon sinek that's mm. what i was looking for if you listen to simon sinek he often talks about that you know um it, it, it's not about who wins today it's not about who wins tomorrow but it's really the long-term process of growing and building and 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 being fully satisfied with what you do yeah and i i often even tell my team and i used to even tell this to to my corporate teams when i ran the teams you know there's more to compensation than dollars the the check is one but the compensation goes way beyond that. Mm. And quality of life is a big part of it. But satisfaction of behind what you've done and what you're doing often plays even heavier role than the check itself, right? Yeah. Like there, there's this cliche saying that, you know, money doesn't, you know, doesn't make you happy, you know, but there, there's something to it because money money allows you to do things that make you happy. 100%. You see what I'm saying? It's like money is not everything, but we can't ignore the money. But there's more to it than the full fulfillment that you can get behind what you do. Yeah. You know, so looking purely at check 
you know, that's a very harsh way of living, in my opinion. That's chasing a dollar. Yeah. You know, but sometimes taking sacrifices in mm. whichever form they come in for the greater good of living the quality that you want. Yeah. Now, you know, that, you know, that that's that's something that I'm interested in. You yeah, know, and for those who hang out around me, they 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 they, they know that, you know. Having a cushy corporate job is beautiful, and I've I, I've been pretty outspoken about this on on you know various various medias. But it, it, having a corporate cushy corporate job was beautiful for me. I never complained about it. I worked hard, but there's something different about waking up every morning, going to your own academy, seeing your students, working with them. Even though right now I probably work more than I work with my corporates, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is. I find it more satisfying. Yeah, you know? definitely. I w- wake up every reason for a reason. Yeah, if that makes sense. I love that. I I love that. And you know, I had a conversation with a friend of mine who's still in that corporate world. We we work together. He and I have been working together since two thousand six. In one capacity or another, maybe we, we were competitors at times. We were coworkers at times. We you know we worked together quite a bit. Uh, one of my best friends and we sat down. We we're having coffee, and he was just talking about just things that are missing in his life. Now, this is a person who is 50 years old, never been married. He saves every single penny he can. He has a lot of security, has a lot of happiness. And I, and I told him, you know, uh, you, you know, I always bring up physical fitness first, right? I mean, if you're physically fit, you know, show, you know, show me somebody who's physically fit. They're probably a little happier than some that are not, maybe not. I don't know, but most times they are, I think. Um, but I told him, you know, one thing about, living that life where you're just about making money and, and if you if you if you give up the oppor- I guess if you take the opportunities that are given to you instead of going after what you really want you end up in a toxic relationship with money because everything that comes from that job that you dislike is going to be toxic including the fruits right mm-hmm. so you end up having a, a bad relationship with money and what I told mm-hmm. him I said what what his superpower is is that he's a gambler he loves to gamble. So he plays the stock market and he, and he studies it and he wants to, you know, he does just like a, a good gambler would do. He, he plays the market to his strengths. And I said, that's your passion. That's something you can pass along to other people. I had the, the, the benefit of having the passion, the passion of jujitsu in my life while I was working in that corporate job. So my corporate job funded my passion. So I think my relationship with money was a little bit better Obviously, well, I spent a lot of it on jujitsu, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but I think that that relationship with money gets a little bit better if you have a passion, whether it's your job funding it or you're working in your passion like you and I are. Yeah. And, you know, we often talk about quality of life or healthy balance in life, you know, and for different people, this will be different things, you yeah. know, but I, I think this is where jujitsu really, and you mentioned this yourself, like, I think this is where jujitsu is really very appealing to many, mm. you know, because sometimes we are in a position that, you know, we have the sucky job and we don't want to, we can't, we are unable, whatever the case is, we, we just can't depart, Yeah, you know, and sometimes things are out of our control, but then we have this thing like jujitsu or other hobbies, you know, something that really keeps us grounded and disconnected at the same time. Mm. This is reality check, you know, and and having those in our lives is critical to healthy balance, you know, between ourselves. I'm not even talking about our family members or friends or, you know, other relationships that we might have just healthy balance within. Mm. So we can sustain, right. The moment it becomes toxic, like you, you mentioned now, now, you know, the life is kind of, you know, going down the drain and, yeah. and often it, it becomes, you know, very hard to return from. Yeah. So, yeah. All and of these important. Absolutely. You know? And, 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 the, and the older you get, the more the demons start talking to you like, oh, it's too late. You can't do it. You can't do it. Right. You know, that's the, <laughs> that that's, you know, <laughs> that's the hard part of our life. Yeah, right. It is. We get into habits. We have our, you know, routines. You know, we get become more concerning. And honestly, just like you mentioned, you know, physical fitness is important no matter what age you are, especially yeah. if you get up there. Yeah. You know, like, you know, I'm, it doesn't like, I, I, I'm 44 and, but I do know somewhere around 35, 36, like something changed. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I woke up one day and it's just things are not the same, you know, yeah. they don't move the same ways. And <laughs> like, you know, and it, it, and I would envision that, 
if I don't take care of myself, this only will progress in one or the other direction. It's really my choice. Yeah. You know, so being ignorant of that is is not necessarily a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't say it's easy, but it's definitely <laughs> not a good thing. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. Yeah. So so let's talk about when you found your passion. Let's talk. Well, one of your passions, obviously. Uh, let's talk about how you found jujitsu. How did that happen? Yeah, so that's a <laughs> that's a very interesting story, to be honest. So, uh, and and I I always share that with a hope that gives others inspiration to you know it, it just you know jump off that ledge, you know, do things that you don't typically would do. But the story goes, you know, I was in cor- corporate life and I was in my twenties, uh, early twenties, and the very beginning of my of, of my career, and as Typical, not to generalize people, but, you know, as typical engineer would, you know, walking or fitness or any type of physical activity was just not a priority of my of mine, you know, was more sitting in front of the screen and doing the things that, you know, I, I loved. But obviously there was a big sacrifice that was taking place. And, you know, I call this part of my life as a fluffy Thomas, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, there, there was some weight that was you know, collected and so on. And and there are some embarrassing photos floating around the internet, you know, when I was, you know, well over 250 and, wow. you know, I just in, in different, different shape, um, you know, more circular, if you will. But um, <laughs> I, I had a very good friend of mine to this day, actually, he teaches at my academy the, the, these days and, um, you know, shout out to Eric, but he trained jujitsu at that time and he was a blue belt and he was my boss um at that time and you know for a long time i saw him you know passing my desk you know and you know his belt hangs out and his gi is inside (laughs) and to this day i claim that he did this intentionally so i see what he was doing he claims that you know not but you know to make that good story you know i do see him passing by every day during lunch and he leaves and he comes back you know, and then at some point he starts planting a seed and it's like, hey, you should try this. You know, yeah, this is kind of cool. You know, I was like, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, it's not for me. I don't, I don't do that stuff, you yeah. know. And, and and remember, this this is a fluffy Thomas, like physical activity is not on my to do list ever, yeah. ever. <laughs> right? Like I'm, I'm not even having a conversation about this, you know, but it, at some point it becomes to a very annoying conversation. Mm. He's poking the bear constantly, yeah. you know, and. It, it comes to the point where I'm like, finally, just fine, fine. I'll go, leave me alone. You know, it, it just, let's just do this. Let's just get this <laughs> over. Okay. And so it happens. I go and I get introduced to, to Jiu Jitsu um, at Carson Gracie Sr. Mm. Uh, you know, and um, I never, never stopped. It never stopped from, from, the, from the day one, day one. I was hooked and a main contributor behind that healthy addiction, if you will, that, that vortex that pulled me in, there were two factors. One, remember I, like framing this big picture here. I have no idea what Jiu Jitsu is. I mean, I did some research, but we are talking, this is, you know, early 2000. So mm-hmm. like, like there's no websites. Google. Right. I don't even know if Google exists. Like I don't remember. I remember <laughs> Yahoo. I remember Yahoo, but yeah. I was. I don't remember Google. You know. So like there was no research. There was no data behind any of this. There was like one website. It was BJJ.org. I remember that. Wow. You know. And like, I. I, I but anyhow, so there was no knowledge really surrounding any of this. And I walk into their room, and there's this old guy sitting there. You know, I'm like, okay, who's, I mean, like, you know, put it like, you have no clue who the people are, right? Yeah. And he comes out and he shakes my hand. He makes me feel like I'm part of this, wow. you know, it's the first time we meet and, you know, come, 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 this, 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 he showed me, he does. And clearly his English is, you know, second language. There's only a few words that he's able to communicate, but very welcoming. So that was factor one, like, wow, this is kind of cool, you know, like, you know, he welcomed me and, yeah. and Carson, Carson senior was a great man from that perspective, you know, such a huge heart, yeah. you know, was everybody. But then one of my first training partner is Miguel Torres. 
And I don't know if you're familiar with Miguel Torres. Uh, but MMA UFC. fighter. Yeah, yeah <laughs> UFC fighter, WSC and UFC fighter. And, you know, but Miguel, you know, he's he he's a smaller guy. You know, I think he at that time he was around buck 35. You know, and remember, I am 250. <laughs> OK, there is a yeah. big weight difference here and size difference. And I get paired up in one of those first sessions with Miguel. And the first thing in my mind is, well, that's <laughs> what, what is it? Like, you know, and I'm thinking like, this is, I'm just going to, I got to go easy here. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, was I wrong? I mean, you know, it, it Miguel, I, 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 you know, he ran circles around me. He tapped me so many times. I had no clue what was going on. And I, I do remember sitting in the locker room that day and, scratching my head and i was like what the hell did just happen <laughs> what in the world i just experienced and, and and the next following thing was like I, I don't know what this is but i need to learn this like th this is this is different yeah and then between those two pivotal moments being extremely welcomed and then this very eye-opening scenario um you know, I was hooked. I, I, I was hooked, you know, over the next, you know, year and a half or so. I mean, I lost a bunch of weight. I went down to uh, bucks, buck 65. Wow. So I, I, I lost tremendous amount of weight, you know, and and and, and just jujitsu became part of my life from that point. And, and you know, short of, uh, you know, injuries and, and just, you know, times off, simple times off, you know, it, to this day, I, you know, I, I can't get rid of it. Wow. That's that's such a cool, that's such a cool story. I, I just love the, um, how, and, and again, I mean, you you were welcomed by, by one of the biggest names in jujitsu, little did you know, but just that welcoming feeling that you get when you walk into an academy, you know, it, it, everybody has the same, I, I've, I've felt that feeling three different times. The first time I walked into the academy where you're kind of walking and you're kind of looking back and forth, like, Oh, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. And somebody says, Oh, come on in. Welcome. Welcome. And the mm -hmm. second time was well, the first time I tied my white belt and I stepped on the mats and I'm kind of like, okay, you know, I'm, I guess I'm doing this. And then somebody goes, oh, come over here. You, you stand on this side. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then the third time I felt it was when my instructor tied my black belt on me and I didn't go back in line. I stood with the black belts. That was mm -hmm. the same feeling as walking into the academy for the first time. Like, okay, no one's stopping me. I'm, <laughs> I'm standing over here with you guys now. <laughs> But I love that feeling. I love that feeling. And I, and I spend, you know, that, that feeling that you had, I think, we, I think we find ourselves chasing that feeling every single day, that feeling welcome and getting smashed and, and understanding that, okay, we have so much to learn. And I, and I found that the more I showed up to jujitsu, the more I realized how little I know about jujitsu. And that's exciting, right? Oh, absolutely. It, it is exciting and it's, um, you know, I call it like a vortex of jujitsu. More, more you do it, more you get sucked in mm. and more pulls you in, you know, like more you learn, you realize how much more is there to learn. Yeah. You know, but like it, it, around that feeling that you're talking about, you know, during our instructors program that we do at my academy, I often talk to guys that there are three things that new student does not want to experience. And those are really important points to always keep in mind. One is they don't want to get hurt. Mm. Two, they don't want to be embarrassed. And three, they don't want to be wrong. Mm. Now, look, let's talk about just just for a moment about this. Somebody gets hurt, they are done. It's over. Yep. But at the same time, that's probably that one that's the easiest to manage. Mm -hmm. Right? Providing a safety environment, one would hope that every academy has, especially for a brand new student. Now, second one is don't be embarrassed or don't make them embarrassed. Now, that one is harder because embarrassment is a self-centered factor. Mm. So it's not what you do, it's how I feel about what you do, Yeah. right? So that one is very difficult to avoid now, right? Now, the third one is probably the hardest, and that's they can't be wrong. Mm. Well, the trick is that every brand new, st new student will be wrong. Yeah. Like it, they are walking into a brand new environment, yeah. right? So it's like creating this almost a false perception of security, if you will, like the safety blanket where they know they're not going to get hurt. They are safe. This is a safe environment. Two, 
we will not embarrass you. So you can just open up and trust us, mm-hmm. right? And three, well, even if you're going to be wrong, we can help you. So it's okay to be wrong. Like you, you normalize the failure essentially at that yeah. point. And, you know, I tell my instructors that if you can achieve those three, they will love it. Mm-hmm. They will love it. Now, yeah. it's hard to get all three. That's yeah. the tricky part, right? Yeah. So, but that's like the goal that you, that I always aim for, you know, like save the environment, trust us. And, you know, you will fail and that's okay, but we are here to help you. And from that point, it just gets better. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think once you establish that with the, um, especially when you're dealing with um, kids and adults, mm-hmm. establishing that trust, right? Those three pillars that you talk about, that's, that's excellent. Um, now you can really work on the hard part, which is to me, Adults always tell me what they can't do before they try it. <laughs> How do you overcome no. that? <laughs> How, Who does that? Well, 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 kids will just do it and they just act silly because they, you know, like they said, yeah. they don't want to be wrong. So they act silly. But, mm-hmm. you know, if you give them enough time, they'll they'll do it. Where adults are like, oh, my, I can't do that. My body doesn't do that. My legs don't do that. Before they even try. How do you overcome that with, with uh, adults? You know, so I have this. We have this. I adopted this great phrase from Gary, who is one of one of my. Uh, he's our GM, and, and and he's heavily involved in my academy. But he te- he used to to this day. He tells his kids, "You can do hard things." Mm. And I kind of you know in the past year and a half, um, I adopted this, and I literally say this to everybody who tells me, "Oh, but but but," I was like, "Ah." Uh-uh. Don't even say it. I don't want to hear it from you, nor you should hear it from yourself. Mm. You can do hard things. The question is, do you know how? Mm. And that is the question, okay? And this is where oftentimes, as instructor, I emphasize why. Understand why, right? And this is the the engineering part of my head. It's like, understand why things work they do. Just understand that part. And the moment you understand that, now you can create your own path. You can you can make your modifications. You can because you know the logistics, the mechanics of what you're trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. You know, the w- number one, I think the obstacle, the mistake that we often fall into is the fact that we're trying to replicate somebody else without understanding what in the world they are trying to do. Yeah. Okay, like I've seen, you know, I've been to seminars where instructors can spend literally and like I find myself the same thing. You can spend an hour talking about closed guard and just the legs. Yeah, because there are so many little things that matter Mm -hmm. yet for an outsider who has never done jiu-jitsu all it means that my legs are wrapped and closed behind your back. Yeah, and it's almost meaningless. Because it's such a simplistic idea, mm. yet we can put so much detail and really trying to understand why you do things the way you do. Now things become more complicated, yet because that complexity is understood, now we have by far easier time to maneuvering within that environment. Mm. You know, I a long time ago, somebody told me this this story or this phrase that jujitsu is like pitch dark room. So imagine you walking into a d- dark room. There's no windows zero. The door closes behind you. It's pitch dark. You can't see anything. Your vision is adjusting a little bit, you know, but you still can't see anything. And like you walking across the room, you don't even know where you go. Like you don't even know there's another door. Mm. You're just going, and like you step on a little piece of Lego, and then words come out of your mouth. You're cursing and other <laughs> things. You know, you stepped on something wet, and like, what the hell was that? Yeah. You know, it's like a bunch of chaos. And this is how we are in our first day, first week, first month, first year, even. Mm. You know, and then at some point, like the little candle just lights up. It's just so small. It's irrelevant to the whole room, but what it does, it creates shadows. Mm. And those shadows tell you where not to go and where to go. It doesn't tell you the direction. It doesn't tell you what you should do, but it just gives you these little warnings. And this is where jiu-jitsu starts slowly. Not makes sense, but it's becoming more visible. And then another pillar is like that light gets bigger. 
lighter. It doesn't light up the room, but now you know like, okay, now I'm going to go towards that light. This is actually, now I see something here. This starts making sense. You know, I can avoid obstacles. I still don't have the ending goal, but I can definitely maneuver around this dark room. And then the lights get on. And maybe you don't see the, all of it, but you see definitely, oh, there's a door. Let me go towards that door. And now you definitely can maneuver around, you know, and this is what we're talking about, like purple or brown belt level. Like you really have a comprehension around this, right? And at some point, at some point, the lights turn on. And it was like, holy crap, nobody <laughs> told me about any of this. Yeah. What is going on here? I didn't know this existed. Yeah. You know, and like this epiphanies we have, and, and we started solving problems and we try to, you know, jujitsu becomes beautiful, you know? And then at one point, the power goes off and everything gets dark again. <laughs> this is when you get your black belt and you're yeah. like, oh crap, well, I'm starting yeah. all over again now, you know? Yeah. But like, it, I found that story so eye-opening as far as like the relationship mm. you know because often jujitsu that's how it is like we want to get through this pitch dark room in just few steps but everywhere we step is wrong we, we we you know we step on something it's like we don't know what it is we we bounce off you know what i mean it's like yeah that is but yet that is the fundamental part of our entire journey yeah see i strongly believe that if you're not failing, you're not trying. Mm. And a failure is a huge component of your success. Yeah. And for those who do avoid failure, those more, more often than not, they actually don't succeed. They never make it. It's the ones who are stubborn. Yeah. The ones who are just, you know, like they are hard headed. And, and I, I, you know, like I hate using these analogies, but the ones who, no matter how many times they fall, they get up. Yeah. Get back up, get back up. And again, and keep going and keep coming. And then a decade later, you know, they, they have this great knowledge. And now they are in the opportunity of sharing these experiences with other people. Yeah. So I, I tell my students kind of going, I, I you know, see, see, I talk too much. No, just, this is fantastic. This is fantastic. <laughs> I'm stealing all I, kinds of stuff from you, just so you know. <laughs> but I tell my students often, you can do hard things. Get it out of your head. Yeah. This is not an obstacle. Understand why things work the way they do. Yeah. And I, I'm telling you, your life will be easier. Yeah. Yeah. And, and why is it that you, why, what, in your opinion, why is it that people, I mean, I can't, I can't imagine I'm like you on day one, I was hooked and I was ready to sign, you know, whatever, if you wanted a five-year contract, I probably would have signed it. But what is it that makes people fall, fall out of love with the process? The 10, the 10 to 15 year process. That's what I call it. I mean, what is it that makes people just fall out of love with that? Um, you know, I think it's, it's few components. I mean, I, I think, um, one is this, our phones, mm. our social media, the attachment that we have with world today, mm. um, unfortunately it, it is a tool that works for us at the same time works against us. Yeah. Right. But if we put that aside for a moment, if we make this timeless kind of, you know, a question answer scenario, I, humans are, um, creatures of habit. Mm. We want to have the same routine. And I think the moment somebody joins jujitsu, they start doing one curiosity is at its peak, mm. right? It's extremely mind stimulating. And as humans, that's probably even more important than a physical stimulation. That's why often we get hooked. Yeah. We, we are in. This is, man, I can't figure this out. Yeah. Especially for those who do have that troubleshooting mindset, mm -hmm. right? However, the moment we establish that routine, life goes on. Now it's easy. This is easy, yeah. right? And we just show in, show up. I'm going Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Boom. Yeah, I get yeah. my four days. Boom, boom. Don't even mess with me. Yeah. You, want go on, you want to go to dinner? Nope. We can go on Tuesday, not on Monday. <laughs> it is what yeah. it is, right? Yeah. So, and then at some point during this process, life happens. Mm. And this is the dangerous part, right? And most of the time, we can control life. We can control injuries, you know, we can control the environment that they took place, probably be more cautious and so on. But once injury takes place, we can't control it. It is what it is. You're injured, you need to heal it, you know, and then you get back. You know, perhaps job changed, mm. schedule changed, you know, kids, family, all these things 
are outside of our control. However, they do have direct impact on what we do and how we do it. And that's the hard part. Mm -hmm. So schedule oftentimes or challenges with schedule is one of the biggest reasons I personally think why people have hard time sticking through it, Yeah, you know, because then we start justifying things. We start thinking about it. It's like, okay, you know, do I want to, um, you know, hang out with my friends and eat pizza and drink beer, or do I want to go hang out with my friends and get beat up? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. you will find two groups who will argue behind each argument yeah. and neither one of them will win. Okay. Yeah. It is a preference. Yeah. Okay. But the moment, this is the, this is the tricky part. The moment we replace the time, for whatever reason it is, but we replace the time we used to train with something else, a brand new habit is getting generated. Mm. So if hypothetically I go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Jiu-Jitsu, and now I'm going to replace Monday, Wednesday with something else. For whatever reason it is, it doesn't matter. It could be a fully justifiable reason. Mm -hmm. After just a few weeks, going back to the old schedule is going to be extremely difficult yeah. because your new habit was generated and it's embedded. Mm. That's why I believe returning from injuries is one of the most difficult things that any athlete, not only jujitsu, but any athlete who has to go through. Yeah, You have new habits, you replace the time you were training with something else. Now you have to not only return and deal with the consequences of your return. Meaning you need to get up physically and mentally to the speed where wherever you need to be. Yeah. But on top of all this, you need to get rid of this thing that you had at this time, yeah. right? So you're dealing with these multiple layers of complexity while you're trying to return to this thing that you really loved. Yeah. Or you still maybe still do. Yeah. And then once you return, you see, okay, I was gone for three months. And like the guy that I was mopping the floor with, man, now like I can't even hang with him. Yeah. <laughs> now that's another layer of yeah. complexity here. Yeah. Right. And again, like don't, don't misunderstand me. Sometimes these breaks are necessary. Sometimes we have yep. no control over them. Life is life. We can control that part. But no matter what, if you want to return, and I tell this to all my students, you want to return, it's going to be one of the hardest things that you will have to do yeah. it is harder than your first day on the mat it's harder than you coming in and asking inquiring about jiu-jitsu classes and schedule and pricing it's going to be harder than that yeah even though you know what you were going into so get ready for this yeah yeah often i being asked well how do you avoid that you know if i have to take a break and th this is the thing don't replace the jiu-jitsu as simple as it is mm. and people Unfortunately, a lot of people don't see a value behind that. And that's the hard part, right? Yeah. That's the life we live. You know, it, it is like, okay, if I'm not going to go to jujitsu, well, you know, I mean, what am I going to sit there and watch everybody? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like you can ask, and this is going 20 years back, but like you can ask, I have four knee surgeries. I had, you know, this like every shoulders. Don't even start me on that. Like, <laughs> I, my, my training habits were very unhealthy when yeah. I was younger, but it is what it is. But like, I remember, you know, getting home from a knee surgery and, and two days later, as long as my, as soon as my meds wear off and I was able to be on the crutches, you saw me at the Academy with my leg propped up and I was making notes. Yeah. I was making notes, literally matter of fact, hold on. I'm going to, where are they here? I just found these. I'm just found if you're watching this on YouTube, <laughs> I just found these. these are notebooks that I had when I was a white belt. Wow. Legit. I just found these and they are intact. Wow. But um, I made notes almost every class yeah. that I could, you know, and now I read it and it's like, what in the <laughs> world were you thinking? Yeah. This doesn't make any logical sense whatsoever. <laughs> but but <clears throat> that disengagement that takes place for whatever reason it is, is very difficult to bridge back. Yeah. Um, you know, so like, this is a very long answer to your simple question. No, like, no, I, I, I love it. This is a great answer because, um, you know, the first thing that happens when someone gets an injury is they, they pause their account. I get it. Hmm. Right. You're going to be out for a while. Pause your account. Yeah. And then I don't know if it's a, you know, they feel kind of ashamed that they're they're going to be sitting in there taking notes when they're not really paying anymore. I don't know what it is. But when I uh, I had a knee surgery 
and it wasn't devastating. It was this meniscus, you know, had a, a bucket handle tear, so it had to be re- had to be repaired. But as soon as I, like you said, came off the meds, I signed up for four tournaments because my doctor said, you'll be back on the mat at this point. You'll be ready for that point and this point. So I, I took the longest, the farthest date, added a month, and then I signed up for the next available tournament and then the following and the following because I needed, yeah, I needed my connection with jujitsu and I yeah. knew it. So yes, I, I, I love that answer that you gave. Yeah. And I, and I have few of those students, you know, in my academy where, you know, um, whether we had, we had the lady who had, you know, it, it was pregnant and, and like, obviously you can't train that's, you know, that, that's, that's a, you know, there's a lot of concerns there, you know, but I, I told us like, I, like I, I tell all my students, I don't care if you pay. That's not my point. Mm. Who you are counter hold? Like, yeah. it, but don't, don't disappear. Yes. Yes. Show up. Yes. Do it. Like you don't have to come four times a week. I'm there's zero expectation or pressure, but yeah. come once yeah. every Wednesday, 6 PM. I want to see your butt sitting in that mm. corner with a notebook and you taking notes Yeah. because the moment you disappear for a week, Next week is going to be justified. Yep. Another week is going to be justified. Yep. Another week. And then you go for four weeks. Mm. Once you go for a month, then another month is justified. Yep. And then three months later, you have no reason to be gone. And yeah. yet you're still gone. Yeah. So do yourself a favor. If if you love this as much as you say you do, don't disengage. Yeah. Now, that's the hard part. No, that's I love it. Part. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. That's great. Well, listen, I want to ask you a couple more questions because this is really, I've been really curious to get perspectives of people like yourself that have been doing this a long time and been black belts and own academies. And literally you're changing people's lives, you know, on a daily basis. And I, and I, and I love that. Um, But there's two things that, that are, um, that are really uh, heavy on my mind right now. It's lineage and legacy. Let's start with legacy. What would you like your legacy to be? You know, that's, that, that, that's a deep question. And I had these conversations with even my peers, you know, some been in a business for longer and others shorter. And, and, you know, we often older you get, I think that term leg- legacy really is becoming heavier and more visible. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I just think about it as I want to do a good job. That's how simple I keep this. And I tell my staff, this, my instructors and, everybody who's in the office and and however you are involved in our our community our academy i just want to do a good job because i do believe if we do a good job people know that Mm. and that is a step one of this domino effect where we can really impact people yeah so you know do i care about gold medals you will not see one gold medal in my academy any medal for that matter. I'm this is not me. Yeah. You know, do I care about having 70,000 square foot facility with state of the art? Would it be nice? Yeah, but th- that's just not my goal. Yeah. You know, yeah. my goal is to have a place where kids come and they have fun. Mm. You know, where guys come working hard whether either in the office or in in ditches whatever the case is or you know providing public service or whatever whatever your job is but you come and you disconnect Mm. you come to that door the door shuts behind you and your problems stay out there you have different problems here yeah you know the problem is that you smile yeah you know um there's this term that we often say at my academy is um, this phrase where jujitsu is the only activity where you come in with a smile on your face, you roll around, you get choked, you're still smiling, <laughs> you leave after getting beat up for an hour and a half, you still have a smile on your face. And the best part that you pay for it, <laughs> yeah. not over the yeah. you know. And I think when we develop a a, a environment like this where people appreciate what you do and it impacts their life in a, such a fundamental way that they simply have fun, enjoy it, and they do it for an extensive period of time, you know, that's that's good enough for me. That's awesome. That that's that that's where, you know, I, I can go back home and I smile and and it was a good day. Yeah. Yeah. 
And, you know, and when I ask the question about lineage, I don't necessarily, you know, ask it in such a way, like, what do you want it to be, you know, 50 years from now, whatever. But really, like, what is it about the black belts that are under you that they all have in common that you really admire? You know, I, I think um, today, and I, I think more than ever, the black belt holds a certain value, certain um certain weight mm. and, and and i don't mean in a sense of that we carry the weight as the instructor as the black belts i think because jiu-jitsu is growing so much the, the 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 instructors and the black belts and not only black belts but the higher belts really get looked up to mm. they 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 serve as a you know a certain pillars in a community and society with um associated with the martial arts respect and 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 you know we lean on them for advice you know for non-jujitsu related things most <laughs> yeah. of the time we create relationships and yeah. listen sidetracking here if somebody told me 20 years ago that i'm gonna be a psychiatrist therapist <laughs> you know no basic human body and how to avoid injuries and all the other yeah. things I was <laughs> laughing at you, but that's the, yeah. you know, there is certain bond that takes place. And often we look up to black belts and, and even I know myself, I have few individuals in my life that I look up to, you know, and, and I, I respect them. And I think that's the important part that mm. we continue impacting our community, the people who we surround ourselves with or who, who surround us by choice. Yeah. And we continue just simply doing a good job and changing, not necessarily changing their life, but impacting their lives. Yeah. You know, creating this environment where they can have fun, they can, you know, have this outlet, they can and so it happens that we train jujitsu, that's even better. That's like almost an extra. You know yeah. what I mean? That's how I look at it. So I I look at jujitsu as a vehicle to impact people lives mm. not the other way around yeah if that yeah. makes sense absolutely absolutely yeah and and you know when when i think about you know what it what it means to be a, a mentor um even in my in my corporate life you know when when i was doing the job for 20 plus years you know and i'd have a new person come in i i don't know if it was the jujitsu part of me that was coming out, but I just wanted to take them under my wing. I wanted to help them succeed. And I knew they were pre the pressure they were under to perform in a very short period of time. So I think, you know, once we develop that, I don't know, I don't know if it's a muscle that we develop, you know, over time in jujitsu, when you're a blue belt, you want to help your white belt buddy. You know, when you're a purple belt, you want to start mentoring people. When you're a brown belt, man, if I could just, I don't know, maybe teach a class here or there. When you're a black belt, maybe open your academy. There's something in us that wants to help others achieve in a very short period of time. We want to help them get as good as they can be as fast as possible. Do you find that in, in your everyday life? Like, you know, you see something, you're a fixer. Um, you see something, is that something that you develop through jujitsu or, and do you see that in other people kind of developing that through jujitsu as mentors? Yeah, I, I think it's a cool characteristic if you will for for us humans in general i think we are very community driven um uh creatures you yeah. know we we i mean even look think about it this way like i remember this i i, I told the story for a few times but like I, I was at the airport flying to la and you know i'm at the water station you know filling out my water bottle you know and i turned back for no reason i just turn around and i see a guy with jiu-jitsu t-shirt okay yeah. and i'm like hey what's up man hey what's up and then i've never met the guy he just had a jiu-jitsu vision where you train oh i train here where you're going how long have been trained but and literally like 20 minutes later my flight is getting cold through the speakers <laughs> right and i'm like crap i don't even know your name like whoa, whoa, whoa. and it was like in that the instantaneous bond that we have, yeah, you know, is irreplaceable. And only humans, I think, can really interact in those ways. Mm -hmm. So it's very natural for us to help others, especially yeah. when we have a skill that they don't have. Yeah. We want to share, yeah. you know. Um, so I, I find that not only in corporate, but also specifically on jujitsu mats, that's extremely visible. Because mostly because we have these identifiers, uh, th these ranks, these 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 kind of 
flags, right? Okay, he's a white belt, no stripes. Well, he got to be brand new. Like, yeah. it just it is what it is. Well, yeah. let me help him out, right? Yeah. At the same time, like, if the white belt walks in, like, zh, 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 oh, black belt. I'm not talking to black belt. Let me talk to this guy here, right? So, yeah. like, th- these are these that clear, on the, you know, we just identify by them, right? It's just, it is what it is, yeah. right? But that helps us to create these bonds that helps us allows us to really help each other yeah. you know what i mean so um yeah i find that phenomenal i mean this is this is part of that culture that i think most academies are trying to create yeah you know that that, that cohesive team community group whatever you want to call it yeah. this is you know a bunch of people who have a common denominator and a common goal in, in their mind yeah yeah so um, last question, because I'm up against it on time. I apologize, but I love this question. I want you to talk to my blue belts or the blue, just the blue belt community, we'll call it, that are yeah. that are over, that are overthinking um, whether or not to continue with jujitsu that are on the fence of continuing or not hitting, hitting the blues. I want you to talk to those guys and just give them just give them a couple a, a couple of your thoughts. Oh, statistics are against you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll answer this question um, kind of around, and it's going to make sense in the, in, in, at the end. But in my mind, there is three pivotal moments in one's jujitsu. And this is, you know... I avoid. I, I try not to put people in categories, but historically, looking at individuals' training, like these are the three main events that take place. One is the day one, mm. when you walk into the academy for the very first time, and there is a huge impact being made on you. Whether you continue or not, that impact is irreplaceable most of the time. Yeah. Second one is the blue belt, and that is the first major milestone. For every student, I don't care if you like it. I don't care if you were surprised. I don't care if you knew and deserved it. This is the first major milestone. Nobody cares about stripes. Everybody cares about the blue belt. It is what it is. Yeah. And then the next one is the black belt. Mm. And the interesting part in my mind is that, and even think about it for yourself or like reflect on it as time goes on is like, I never cared about my purple brown belt. I never did. Like, I got them, you know, yeah. like, I, I was proud of them. But blue belt was the one that I was like, I need to have the blue belt. Yes, yes. Now I have the blue belt. Yes. I'm the blue belt. You're not the blue belt. I'm the blue belt. <laughs> you know, like, and then, but the next one after that is the black belt. Yeah. And because of this, because of these pillars, these are the pivotal points. Right? These are the most important points in our journey, if you will. Day one, we make decisions. We stay, we go. Mm. The second one is the blue belt. Yeah. That's the first major achievement that will be recognized as a rank to a student. Most of the time, that blue belt comes, depending on the academy, how often we train. But, you know, it's what I understand is somewhere between a year or two years. Yep. Somewhere there. Yep. Right, depending on different people, different academies, or locations, and so on. Right, that's a long freaking time. Yeah. As a result of that, as a result of that, many out there, the moment they get it, they are like, "I did it! Mm. I did it! Yeah, I did it! I, you know, at this point, I'm not freaking waiting until that black belt. <laughs> right. This was a hard work. Yeah, and. It is, I think, unfortunate because I think from that moment, it actually gets much easier mm. than it was up to that point. However, because we are in that moment of time, in that environment, we don't see that, right? Yeah. So we can't predict future. We don't know the feeling that we're going to have tomorrow. We only build our experiences based on what we've done in the past. Yeah. And up to this point, it was freaking hard. Yeah. And we make this judgment. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people depart right around the blue belt. It's not because they don't like it. It's not because, you know, they don't have time. There might be an excuse that they give, but that's truly not it. I think most of the time is the fact that this was hard. I was just rewarded. And honestly, 
I'm going to just relax for a moment. Mm. And we kind of go back to that conversation of taking a break. Yeah. And I'll tell you, it is unfortunate that over the 20 some years that I've been on the mats, I've seen individuals getting their blue belt and I've never see them after that. Oh, and, and there's so much potential walking out the door. It's so much potential. And, and, and it is unfortunate. So if I was to speak to the blue belt community over there, I, you know, I said, don't, don't, don't be the statistics. Don't, don't fall into this because the, the beauty of the journey that is follow that moment, it's so much richer mm. than what you've experienced. You have no idea and you are yet to see it. Now, you know, Nothing comes from quitting, in my opinion. Right. The only thing that comes from quitting was the fact that you acknowledged that you couldn't continue. Yeah. Like that's the only that's the only thing that comes from quitting. Yeah. So why would you do that instead of experiencing what is ahead of you? Yeah. You know? Um. Yeah, that's kind of my two cents on this, but it, it. it's it, it is it is very impactful and it's very real. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Blue <laughs> blues is real. <laughs> it is. It is. I I hate it because there's so much. I, I just. You know, as an instructor, you invest so much into those into into those students, especially when they're on the when they're right on the cusp of getting their blue belt. You're you're helping them, you know, um, achieve that, right? You're helping them prepare for that, and then and then they they attain it. And I know I feel like I accomplished something just by them getting it, you know. And and I'm I'm positive that they spent the past you know eighteen months or two years achieving it, and now it's over. And I, I don't know, it's a bummer. It's a real bummer. It is. Yeah. It, yeah. it truly is. And I think every instructor is going through that. I know I, know I am. I, th I know a lot of my peers do. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, you asking yourself sometimes even is like, well, what would happen if I didn't give them a blue belt? Yeah. Would they continue training? Mm, that's a great question. Wow. You know, because yeah. I mean, if, if you take that blue belt as a pivotal point of their decision, then why the hell do we promote them, yeah. right? Like it's like, but at the same time, you have to look at it from the other perspective. Like they earn this, right? Mm -hmm. They get this as a not as a motivator for the future. You get this as a reward for what they've done. Yeah. So it wouldn't be fair to hold them back. Yeah. You know. So it. Listen, people are people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think this kind of goes back to the fundamental, fundamental thought of a leadership. Yeah. You know, it, our job as leaders is not to tell people what to do is to give them opportunities to take experiences and take this path on their own. Yeah. And if it so it happens, they choose not to continue. You know, we gave them the opportunity and it's really up to them to make those decisions, you know, along the way. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but you know, it's true. Yeah. You know, but, uh, well, listen, um, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of up against it. I got back to back podcast today, so I apologize because we bumped yours up a little bit. So no, <laughs> <laughs> so listen, before, before we go, I want to make sure people can find you on, on social. I want to make sure they can find your podcast. We didn't get a chance to talk about that. We are going to do a part two. I hope you don't mind. I'll hit you up in the next couple months. We'll do a part two because please, we, please are, do. I, we are scratching. Like I said, I stalked you. So we are scratching the surface on your whole story. But uh, please share with the audience uh, where they can find you. So Instagram. Instagram is the best way. Is my last name. Just type in R-O-Z-D-Z, -Z and you're going to find me. I'm the only man in the world who has that many Zs <laughs> on their last name. So um, find me there. And then so you desire, uh, listen to cool stories from Jiu-Jitsu, especially historically. You know, we've had a couple, couple guys from Dirty Dozen nice. on our show, and we talk about their stories and so on. Check out The Row Radio. Um, you know, it, 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 we've done hundred plus episodes and, and it, it's been a lot of fun and, and I'm hoping that it helps a lot of individuals just like what you're doing with your show. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. If you love the show, please like, and subscribe, please follow us on Instagram and make sure you hit the subscribe button on YouTube. And, uh, if you have the time, uh, drop us a review on Spotify, I don't know, Google, wherever else we are. I really appreciate it. And professor Thomas, thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate your time. As always, thank All you right. for having me. Take care.